Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital. Uh, today is uh, Tuesday, November 14th. It's around 6.15 New York time. Uh, so markets are closed here in the U.S. and we saw a very busy day on markets and, and bonds especially along with currencies, which impacted obviously equity prices following what was a softer than expected uh, CPI print, which I think caught many people off guard, including myself. Um, you know, certainly the, the the pace of disinflation and uh, an outright deflation and things like energy prices, used autos, um, and uh, even lodging were certainly much more than anticipated. And I think that's what ultimately drove the 10th uh, decline in um, th that ultimately is what dro drove the miss across both headline and core CPI. And uh, this is a, a certainly it could be a potential narrative shift in terms of how we're thinking about yields and rates going forward, and even currencies for that matter, because if, again, we continue to see signs of weakness coming out of oil prices and gasoline prices and just general softness and uh, prices across the economy, it could be the sign of a consumer that's finally, you know, starting to really slow. And tomorrow we'll be getting retail sales and also PPI, and that's also going to be an important data point just because it may give us a little bit of a clue in terms of where you know rates may be going and how the yield curve ultimately shifts. We'll start with the 10-year rate just because that was obviously one of the more widely followed ones and was down, you know, a 19 basis points today. You know, these are moves that that, that are historically huge, um, but they seem to be quite common in, in today's day and age. In fact, it was just on November 1st, the day of the Treasury refunding and announcement and, and the Fed meeting that we saw treasuries drop 20 basis points in, in one day. And, and today we follow that with a 19 basis point drop. Um, it's worth pointing out here that, you know, this is a, like I mentioned last night's video, that if we were to see uh, the 10 year treasury drop and take out this uptrend, um, that it could be a fairly bearish indicator, at least for the direction of rates, which would obviously be bullish for prices. Um, and at least as of today's close, we traded below the 450 level, which pushed us back below the 50-day moving average. And also we can see the 10-day exponential moving average is crossing below the 50-day moving average, which could be a short-term bearish indicator for the direction of rates. And uh, certainly we're going to want to keep an eye on and see how this level now acts uh, if the 450 area becomes a level of resistance, which it may very well become, then we need to think about the 10-year rate moving lower back towards this 435 region. You know, clearly tomorrow with the retail sales, depending on how that goes, um, that's this is this is going to be really interesting to see how the market responds to that data. Clearly, if we get back above the 450 area, there's room to retest the 460 trend line, and again, maybe these moving averages up here between four. 60 and, and 463 or so on the 10 year. Now, the, the two year also fell very sharply today, um, also by 20 basis points, which again, these are just historically unprecedented moves in terms of the volatility that we're seeing in rates. Uh, 15 basis points, 14 basis points, you know, 15 ba these were the types of moves that you didn't see very often. And what's interesting is that this move here uh, of 20 basis points is almost, you know, equivalent to what we were seeing during. The SVB uh, collapse when, you know, the two-year fell 28 basis points and uh, 61 basis points in one day. Um, and so certainly these are pretty sizable moves. And um, they could be speaking, obviously, with the two-year falling. This is really more indicative about what the market is thinking about in terms of the Fed and rate cuts. And clearly the market is starting to think that there are going to be rate cuts coming um within the next six to nine months. And now you can start to see that the two year is pricing this in. There's a little bit of a support level here around 483 to 485. And again, like I, like we talked about on the 10 year, it's gonna be interesting to see how the market responds to this tomorrow, especially following retail sales, depending on how that data reads. Does this become a resistance zone or does this just kind of a little bit over an overshoot of support? If it's a support level, then we should think that we would see rates move back up above 5%. While if this is going to be a resistance zone that we're going to see a test of 470, and if 470 goes, then well, we could be talking about rates moving materially lower. And based on the fact that we're seeing 
you know, Fed fund futures pricing in uh, the the, tr the Fed fund futures are pricing in basically a 4.4 percent December 2024 contract reference rate. Then it could be suggesting that the two year has you know some distance to go. And uh, again, depending upon how the two year you know materializes is also going to have a big impact in terms of how the yield curve continues to evolve. I mean, the, the, the yield curve has been very, has been negative now for, you know, quite a long time, really since July 4th of last year. So we're well beyond a year going on almost 18 months of having a, an inverted yield curve. And at some point, the yield curve is going to have to normalize here. And it may be at the point of the cycle where we begin to see the two year falling faster than the 10 maybe the 10 year sort of stabilizes in this four to four and a half percent range while the two year goes down and that allows the yield curve to really begin to re-steepen. And this is going to be more of an indication potentially of some softening in the economy and even the potential of a, a recession. But again, we'll have to continue to monitor this. And so obviously with rates falling dramatically, um, you know, that's that had an impact on the dollar. Uh, the euro had a gigantic move, moving up almost 1.7% today, which is also, you know, an unusual size move. Um, again, right at these levels, our next level of resistance comes around 109 or so. And it's important to realize that we're already trading above the upper Bollinger Band now, and we're also trading just about at 70. So this is an area where we could start thinking that there may be some further upside for the euro over the very near term, but we also need to be aware that the euro is approaching overbought levels, much like we identified when the euro was down in this region that it was reaching oversold levels. Um, we need to be aware that we are reaching overbought levels here on the euro, and that could be a sign that the euro is due to pause, at least in this region. Maybe there's a little bit more room to go to the upside. When we look at the pound, it's not that much different. Again, where you're seeing the pound go up and through the upper Bollinger Band while the RSI is approaching the 70 level. Uh, again, when we also look at this, we can see that uh, we're also where we're also approaching resistance around 125. A breach of 125 certainly sets up room to maybe go to around 126.30. But this is an area, again, where maybe we start seeing the pound begin to settle down and, and maybe consolidate a little bit to catch its breath. The yen didn't really have a very big um, move today, not really relative to the others. It was down 89, 90 basis points, which is a pretty big move in, in general terms. But again, given the fact that we had a really big move in other currencies, this move seemed relatively small compared to some of the others. At least when we look at the, um, the, the yen, right now we're hovering around the 20-day moving average, which has been a level of support for this over a period of time. A breach of the 20-day moving average seems to imply a move back down to around 149 and a quarter and maybe a testing of the lower Bollinger Band around 148.90 or so. Uh, likewise, a move higher seems limited at this point to maybe 150, 189. Um, there's, was, there was some strange price action in the, um, in the end yesterday, which may have suggested there was some intervention perhaps on, on the behalf of the Japanese uh, officials, but again, this is just speculation based off of the type of movement we saw in the end when we approached the the 150, 190 to 152 region. So that's worth being aware of that there was something going on at this level that caused this decline. And clearly now with the yen moving lower, given the weaker U.S. data and the sharp sharp drop in rates, um, this is certainly something to take note of and and could suggest again, like I said, that there's perhaps a little bit more downside risk here to the yen, uh, potentially, like I said, down to this 148.85 region. It's going to really depend upon how this acts at the 20-day moving average. So, I mean, that's essentially where we are at this point in terms of rates and dollar. Uh, it seems like right now the rates are driving you know, equity prices along with the dollar, and that's really been the case now for some time. I, I think at some point, though, we need to really think about the impacts of what a re-steepening yield curve will ultimately mean as an economic signal and what that historically may or may not mean for equity prices. But at this point in the game, it may be premature. So just something to, to keep an eye on. And, and certainly it looks like there's potentially some room for yields to continue to decline a little bit and, and certainly some room for the dollar to, to weaken a bit more. Anyway, I hope this finds you well and, and you find this useful. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. Bye.